How small is it? This kind of small. It fits my hand, which is perfect. It's a single serving size. And of course, grill needs electric and electric needs power. That means we are actually, uh, so we're gonna plug this in right over here. Right, that's our heavy duty extension cord. Oops, don't run away. And then we're gonna plug this in right over here. All right. And then we are going to turn this guy on. It's charged 100%. Now, what is not on yet is the inverter. So we are not actually um, heating that thing up yet. I don't want to start heating it up until I have uh, until I have my meat seasoned. We're having here a family pack of 80-20 ground beef, $4.49 a pound, $13.56 in price, uh, just, just a bit over three pounds. Just a bit over three pounds. And now, now what shall we do here? You know, we are making, I think we're making three batches again. You remember from the big world we made three batches? Yeah, we're gonna do the same thing over here. Mm. Hotty hot sauce. Okay, so while I'm mixing this up, I'm gonna turn the grill on. The grill takes roughly two, three minutes to warm up and it's gotta be closed. Um, how do I turn it on? In the back, there is somewhere a button. Ah, there we go. Now wait. There it is. Okay, beauty. All right. All right. So a little grill has its light on, so it's heating up. And Little Grill is apparently using 600 watts. That is nice. 600 watts is nice because it's considerably less than the 1100 that the other grill was using. So if you have a smaller power bank that cannot handle 1100 watts, then this grill might be a better solution for you, right? Now, one challenge is always that um, energy equals heat in this kind of context. So the amount of heat you're getting is dependent on the energy and the surface area. If I'm using only a small piece of uh, metal to be heated up, I can use a small amount of energy to do so. Uh, think about a light bulb. But if I have a large piece of metal to heat up, I will need a large amount of energy to heat that up probably. So that's why the big grill takes 1100 and the small grill only requires 600 to do essentially the same job. Now this grill is going to do exactly the same thing that the other grill was doing. That means it cycles on and off. Right now it's uh, cold of course so it's heating up. So it's in heating mode. But now my power bank just went down to zero in the wattage. That means the grill must be hot. Could that be possible? Oh yes, it is possible. So what we're doing, we're taking a good chunk of meat over here. I think each flavor we're probably doing in two batches. All right, so here we have a nice chunk of meat. Open it up, put it in. Close it up. Now what we're also going to be doing is we're going to put a paper towel underneath here because 
There used to be a drain drain thingy in there. So I don't I don't see the drain the drainage tray right now. Anyway. Just back to using 600 watts. Now if that is not lovely then I don't know what lovely is. Oh. Gotta have my blood poison. Juice is dripping out all right. Okay. All right, so this is not particularly sexy on the camera. I've got my the wrapper from the meat tray. I'm using the wrapper to actually catch the liquids. The uh, the paper towel is already drained, uh, drenched in, in liquid. Now, that is not fat. So let's talk about quality of meat. I mostly because it's right there, go shopping at Stop and Shop. A, I don't know, maybe it's a chain that's just in the Northeast or something. I know they're in New York, Connecticut and New Jersey. Um, there might be in other places as well, I don't know. So what I have noticed the other day, and this is proof of that too, is that the meat is very watery. I was making a pork chop and I had tons of water coming out of it. A lean pork chops, not fat coming out, water, like the amount of it. I would say it's 20 to 25 percent water weight what I got from that pork chop and I'm not particularly thrilled about that. Uh, now with this ground beef, same thing, there's water in there. If you cook this in a frying pan and you have water in your frying pan, there's something wrong with that meat. I do not know if this is stop and shop specific thing or if every retailer is doing this. I mean, secondly, it's not the retailer, it's wherever they're getting their meat from, right? And this is store brand, so this is not where I can say uh, Purdue is doing this. This is store brand, so it's generic for all we know, right? We don't know where they're getting their meat from. We don't know who's responsible here. So, when I went to the supermarket after my first experience with that meat, with my pork, I looked at some pre-packaged meats. And these pre-packaged meats said 22% brine. What does that mean? 22% brine. Now, when they put the meat into the package, they often add a little bit of water, you know, to keep uh, like the, the colors fresh and all kinds of things. So there's a little bit of salt in there. It's usually like, it's supposed to be a salt water brine, right? But 22%, does this mean that 22% of my meat is water? Like, seriously? 22%? So if it cost, if it's, so if it's, if it's, if it's a pound, that means nearly a quarter pound is water. If it costs $10, I'm paying $2.50 for water.
I have no problem with a brine being added to a packet. I do have a problem if, if a tremendous amount of water is added to the actual meat. The drippings here. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Right? Besides everything that came out over here, right? Look at it. Why? Why? What is that? Well, this, this is only an 80 20 meat. Twenty-two percent water on me to add it to the meat is not acceptable. That means the three-pound pack of meat that I just bought, which three pounds is uh, forty-eight ounces, right? That means twelve ounces of this is water. What I still have left in here is twelve ounces water. I'm going to experiment with different retailers to see if I'm getting the same results at other places. And if I don't... Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at water. Just, just water. Water. It's just in there. It's ridiculous. It takes the fun out of eating because you know you're getting screwed when you buy it. I'm not a fan. And I understand they're, they're tasked or they're, they're asked to provide affordable products. I get it. But not like that. So my meat is 80-20. Yeah. So the meat is actually it's not 80, 20. It's 60, 40. Right? Because 20% is fat, 20% is water, there's only 60% meat in there. That means with all the high meat prices that we have, this is actually almost twice the price than what it should be. 13.56 what I paid. That means two dollars and seventy for water. I can buy a gallon of water for less. You know those grill channels, channels in the grill. They are there to let fat, excess fat, drain off. They are not there to let water drain off. Not happy. Not happy at all. Look at it. Look at it. Why? Why is there a pool in there? Why is there a pool of water in there? I would like to know. Okay, this one gets some more pepper. I didn't taste much of the pepper. Actually, no, hold on. Of course I didn't taste much of the pepper. I I didn't eat it yet. And this is just salt and pepper. If 
you ever made wet hamburgers? Because that's what it's gonna do. You're gonna put on a hamburger bun and the thing just gets soggy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was a pepper. <coughs> Beauty. This is the last batch, it's the one that has the hot sauce in it. So drinking my Diet Coke, am I even carnivore? You're not supposed to drink Diet Soda. You know, we, I doubt that any one of us is a purist, right? I'm not a purist because I'm, I'm human. As a human, I'm full of, of faults that is part of our design. Fighting those faults is also part of our design. But how much of it can you fight? Why am I drinking tons of diet soda? Well, mainly I'm drinking it for the caffeine. I was actually diet soda free. Eight years ago. I think I was going for like two to three years almost without diet soda. And you know what changed? I took a new job and I was working nights and I needed to be awake. And I went back to diet soda and diet red balls. Oh yeah, you can taste the peppery thing in here. Wow, nice. And the new job I'm doing at nighttime. So I definitely need to be alert and awake. I don't know, man. It's, it's the one thing I haven't given up yet. I want to, but it's not easy. I need to change my lifestyle to do so, and I'm trying to, but I, but I need the lifestyle or the job to make the money so I can change my lifestyle. It was supposed to have happened already this year, the summer, early summer, May, June. But I got, I got delayed. So the last batch is almost done. It's heating right now. When the heating cycle here is over, there you go, zero. And now I'm gonna turn it off. So it's down to 86% on the, it's down to 86%. And I can safely turn this off and it's still going to cook the meat for another minute because it's still on the hot grill, right? 86% is one. Each percentage point is 13 bucks. So it's 130, 40, 50, 60, 70, 182 watts. I just used 182 watts to cook three pounds of ground beef. I'm also starting to get full. At this rate, I can do this for five, six days without recharging without recharging anything. Well, am I gonna do that? No, probably not. 
I mean, it's more a question of if it's plugged in, well, to solar panels. I will most likely still get a little something back. But if I can do for five to six days, that is, you know, this is the majority of the week. It's almost a week. And if it's that much, what's the chance of me not generating pretty much anything for a week? The nuts are coming down. I could probably go six and a half days at this ratio. That's quite interesting. And if I was eating a little bit less, I can stretch out it easily past a week. Imagine I was cooking only two pounds, not three. I would be saving one third of the energy. 182. Now it's only 120. With that, I could go for 10 days. Think about that. And at that point, I only need one nice day to recharge it. Oh, I'm full. I don't even think I can eat the last piece here. Okay, so maybe, maybe you want to watch some of this. This is my cleaning method, right? I'm gonna look for the crusty spots. With a wet towel. And I try to to wipe them down a little bit. And then I'm gonna follow up with a dry towel. left on this tower I'm gonna use on the next section like right here now if you remember from my steak and egg videos the one thing I've always done is I've always wiped my frying pan clean with a paper towel first because out here obviously I have a limited amount of water available however I think we probably should be doing that even at home because the less grease you put down the drain, the better. So we probably, we probably should most definitely wipe it dry, dry first. Get all the grease, you know, the, the majority of things, get it out. Then you wash it. It's not that you can't wash it. If the grease is not, is in there. But why would you want to let that grease run down those pipes? 
requires extra hot water, it requires extra soap, it requires extra everything to make sure that that water or that grease rubber does not impact anything else. But yeah, there you have it. Oopsie, the other way around here. There you go, kind of clean. Kind of. It's gonna get um, it's gonna get sterilized when we when we cook the next time because that is when we that is when we what should we call it when we heat it up right I guess you could do a, a heating cycle now too just to get it to a temperature right but uh, I don't know, I don't think that's necessary. So anyway, you know, it's, um, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a big grease spot here on the table. That's, that wasn't the most glorious thing to be happening, but nothing I can do about that now. But yeah, th that was the smaller grill version only using 600 watts, uh, cooking three pounds of meat with only 182 watt hours. Perfect for the smaller solar generator. And most certainly it's good enough for one person cooking. In the past I have made chicken breasts on it and they turned out just beautiful. Yeah, 1356, that was my lunch cost dinner cost that's my food cost for the day 1356 if you divide that by three meals like a normal person you come in down to 450 a meal sorry 452 and I didn't even finish it So, 452 a meal. I don't think this is a bad ratio. I, you know, some people say, oh, I'm just eating meat, that's expensive. Yeah, if I just buy steak, that's gonna be more expensive. Well, this is ground beef. This was four, I don't know, 459 a pound or something, right? It's, uh, and I ate nearly three pounds, so. It's, it's not that much of a big deal, really. Additionally, think about the money that I'm saving. No snacks. That alone will probably save me five to ten dollars in a day. And then, you know, vegetables are expensive too. 